The American bison is an unpredictable and at times lazy and unconcerned animal. They appear peaceful, but this large mammal has a temperament that is totally unpredictable. Bison roam the plains of North America in their millions. Hunting decimated their population down to less than 1,000 animals. Today, things are looking up. The population is growing, and to one family, a pet bison is the perfect house companion, even if the house is a little A-frame cottage on the plains of Texas. People that don't know me think I'm crazy, and the people that know me know I'm crazy. <laughs> I've been here for 31 years, and I've been training horses for a living, and I use buffalo or bison to train my horses with. Yeah, I was fascinated with them when I was a kid and never thought about even owning one. I don't think when I was young you could eat legally own a bison. They're a little on the crazy side, and most people that raise cattle don't want to mess with them because they tear your pens and stuff up. They're a lot wilder than a cow is, and they're harder to handle for most people, but if you know how to handle them, they're almost as easy to work as cattle are. Sharon and R.C. are both extreme animal lovers. We both have the fascination with bison. I'm not much for the little bitty dogs or anything like that. I like the wildlife. And that's one reason why R.C. and I, you know, fit together, because we both like the wildlife. The more Western it is, the better we both like it. First time I ever saw a bison, of course, with R.C. I mean, you know, in life, you know, I mean, I've seen them on TV and all that, but first time was whenever R.C. brought some home to train his, you know, cutting horses. After that, we decided to own Wild Thing and he become our pet. Keeping a bison as a pet does have its challenges. They can weigh up to 2,700 pounds and run at over 30 miles per hour, and they can get a little grumpy. A lot of times you got to go in the pen with them, and you got to know your distance and everything because if you get too close, they're going to come after you or they're going to run away. And if they don't run away real quick, they're fixing to come and get you. They're uh, the largest land animal in the United States that's native to the United States. They can outrun any horse. It's always dangerous being around a herd of bison because you don't know when one's going to attack you. And I have had them horn my horses and knock my horses all the way down on top of me. I've been in this situation a lot. Uh, one particular cow one time come after me, and if I hadn't had a jacket, I threw it on top of her horns, and I got out of the pen while she was fighting the jacket. He got me down one time, three times in one day, and uh, my wife had to dress me for three days. <laughs> Hello? He knocked me down. He was wanting me to be a buffalo and play with him, but Hello? I got to an ax handle and explained to him we didn't do that. <laughs> R.C. counts Wild Thing as his pet and his companion on the ranch. This big bison is, at times, almost cute. Wild Thing, of course, you know, I mean, he's a little orange calf, you know, whenever we get him. He's about two and a half, three months old. And uh, of course, R.C.'s trying to halter train him and, and everything, and he conquers that. 
But then I have a brilliant idea, and I said, well, why don't we bring Wild Thing in the house? Hello, Wild Thing. And he says, you don't understand. He is a bison. He could tear up your house. You may not have nothing left. No. Well, you only live once. You bring your cats and your dogs and your kids in the house, so might as well. So ever since then, we've been bringing Wild Thing in the house, and he's grown up with us. He has lots of personality, even though he's a bison, he's got personality. I mean, if he gets his feelings hurt, he goes and pouts, and you know when he pouts, because he just has that certain look in his face and the certain movements that he gives. The wild Thing also likes to be pushy sometimes, but then again, Wild Thing can be loving. Wild Thing! Hello, baby boy. But only to RC and I. Only the past 10 years, I've been able to actually touch him and groom him. I mean, I'm always out there taking pictures of him and different things like that. I can wear fringe and wear big headdresses that I make with feathers. RC, he can't wear fringe around him, not safely. So, you know, and I think it's because uh, while things used to RC being just a cowboy, and he's used to me being just out there, because I mean, I am, I'm always out there. So he never knows what to expect of me. <laughs> but there's times that Wild Thing is sitting outside, relaxing, and I may kind of crawl in and lay close to him. I can't touch him, I can't lay up against him, because then he'll jump up. But I do lay in there with him, and then sometimes RC and I both will lay in there together. And I mean, you know, he can be, you know, seem real sweet. But, but he's not a, you know, sweet animal per se, you know. I mean, he is a very dangerous animal for others. Well, I'm afraid he might tear up stuff, you know, if we brought him in. But when I brought him in, it was kind of odd because he behaved himself in here. And then pretty soon I was leaving the door open and he'd come back and forth in the house. And, but he never used the bathroom in the house. If he'd ever used the bathroom in the house, this deal would have never happened. He potty trained himself. I, I do not have a clue how you could potty train a buffalo. <laughs> now that he's gotten big, we had to move coffee tables and couches around. It's like having a small car come through your house. Hello. He has a hard time getting his horns through the doors. We've had people eat with us before at their own risk, <laughs> but it's not probably perfectly safe for them, although I'm willing to lay down my life to save theirs. When the grandkids come over, <laughs> we have to put up fences, we have to put up everything in the house. We don't have to when Wild Thing comes yeah. down. I'd rather have the Wild Thing in the house than my grandkids most of the time. <laughs> so far, he hadn't tore up anything. He had, he's just been perfect in the house. He, he looks at everything. He's real curious about everything in the house. But he doesn't tear up anything. A lot of times, as soon as he walks out of the house, he'll knock my barbecue pit over. But it's outside. But in the house, he's a perfect gentleman. He's unpredictable. <laughs> in the house, he's pretty predictable. Outside, uh, he's really a crazy, wild, crazy animal outside. He's very dangerous for anybody else to be around. It's taken 10 years for Sharon to be able to go around them safely. And I still want to be there for her because I will attack him. I can't win, but he thinks I can win. <laughs> Always being the alpha, you got to be the alpha. You got to have enough courage to stand up to him even though you know you can lose. I don't have a chance against him, but he thinks I can. Once I get him by the horns, he thinks I got him. It's a big bluff. It is likely that Wild Thing is the only fully trained bison in the world. His skills go beyond wrecking the fences. He pulls a chariot, plows a garden. He was the best man at a wedding. My boy's the first one to ski behind a buffalo on, on sand. And my daughter's the first one to snow sled behind a buffalo. 
He eats at the dining room table with us. Any crazy thing I can think of to do, I do it. He's the first one to ever pull a canoe. There are times that Wild Thing seems to get what's going on, even at a big event like his owner's wedding. I just thought it was something different <laughs> to do. I didn't know anybody to ever know about it but us, but uh, yeah. I thought it was kind of cool to have a bison or buffalo as a best man. Our minister, he knew us already, so... He wasn't real comfortable, uh, though. <laughs> no, he wasn't real comfortable, but he, he liked it. I mean, he thought it was neat, you know, and, and he only said, only for us, not for everybody. Our wedding has been all over the world. He was a good gentleman. He did throw the rings off his horn, so... <laughs> I see him as a little baby. <laughs> I don't see him as a big, big buffalo. He's a baby to me. He's not big to me because I've raised him and he's still a baby to me. Yeah. And when you look at his little face, it just looks so sweet. So you just fall in love with him, you know. I have no fear of him at all, but I do know when not to mess with him. He's, he's moody. There's sometimes I know that I better leave him alone. There is no doubt that this is a dangerous animal. It could escape and cause a lot of trouble. But to date, Wild Thing has seldom wandered beyond his local street. If he gets out, everybody just take pictures from their porch, but they know not to go around him. Yeah. He, go, he goes down the road about a quarter of a mile and fights a cedar tree. And I learned the first time I went down there, I better let him fight the cedar tree for a little while because he'll come after me if I try to make him quit too soon. Mm -hmm. So I let him go ahead and fight it for a little while, then I'll put a rope around his horns and lead him home. He's got a real big barn, and he has fans in it, and I water the ground every day because it's hot this time of year, and he stays pretty comfortable. Of course, his favorite place is in the house. I go over there and feed them every day. I can pour the feed in the trough. If you try to pour the feed in the trough, he'd kill you. He don't want anybody feeding them but myself and Sharon. I have let other people feed them through the fence and he'll attack them. RC treats Wild Thing with mutual respect, but it is RC who has to do the cleaning up. I just got a lot of joy out of him. I got to clean his poop out of the yard every, every day. And I'm, you know what, I'm glad it's out there so I can clean it up, because I, I just enjoy him. I brush him every day. I spend more time with him than I do my wife. I'm in the pen with him when he's tearing up stuff usually. He may be throwing the canoe in the air or tearing the fences up. I stay in the pen with him. He's, ever since he hurt me one time pretty good, uh, He's never, I think he knows he hurt me and now he don't want to. And the hard part when we're filming or doing something out there and, and we want a video or something, I can't get close to him when he's tearing up stuff. But for the opposite reason, you think. If I get close to him, he's gonna quit. Cause he's gonna protect me by quitting. So if I wanna share him doing a video of him tearing up a fence. I gotta stay back far enough that he won't quit. Cause once I get in a danger zone, he shuts it down. He knows I'm his best friend because I never do anything against him. I do everything for him. Wild Thing will be here all of his life. All of his life. Yeah, we'll, ne we'll never give up Wild Thing. He, he, hopefully, he's middle aged. He's 12 now. And he should live to be around 25 at least, I hope. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he's not, he's not going anywhere. There's no amount of money could ever buy him. Mm -hmm. He'll never be for sale. Never. And he would be too dangerous for anybody else to have. And one thing about the bison, there are some other trainers. There have been other trainers. I've known four of them killed in the last five years. And they kill nearly all their trainers. And he may kill me, but I hope he don't. <laughs> and I sure want to protect her. Mm -hmm.